over. Last mission, last mission. The final boss mode. Yeah, yeah, what's good, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Real Talk, where as always, the shit's real, we talk about it. I'm your host for tonight, Pat Scorpion, the New England represent, and as always, I got my man with me. I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Yo, what it do? It's trying to work the guy, aka the GOAT artist, LB, Lana Del Boss, the Soul Wars creator, RingGangRadio.com in the building. Build yes, building. sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Ringing in the house forever and always. And as always, I got my other man with me. I'm going to let him introduce himself. What's good, y'all? You already know who this is. Your boy, King P, Bodega P, Bodega Boxer in the building. Ring Gang Radio 24-7. Feeling super fly today. Let's get it. Hey, Bodega P, straight from the sewer. Feeling super fly. Yo, tell us, boy, why are you feeling super fly, bro? I mean, as, I mean, as always, you got to feel super fly, but especially... You know what I'm saying? If we talk about super fly weights, I'm, you know, we got to be the flies to the fly. <laughs> Word, I can dig it, man. That's real talk right there. Uh, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you first set that shit off. So yeah, you know, we're going to start off, you know, by recapping last weekend's cards. You know, Loki was a very underrated week weekend of boxing. Like, none of the, none of the main fights disappointed at all. And we and one of them, we even got a fight of the year candidate out of that one. Uh, I mean, and, I mean, the super flyweights are always gonna bring it, so you already know. Yeah, but you know how it is, though. Like low key, one fifteen is like, I mean, it should get more attention. Like I always say, like the one of the few things that HBO did right in its dying days was spotlight one one twelve one fifteen, you know, and it was chocolate Tito and you know and the rest of them, you know, and even now like one fifteen, like these two these cats are fighting each other. Like some of them, like at least they fought each other like twice. You know, in this round robin, you know what I'm saying? You know, some are going on to three. You know, um, but yeah, you know, they 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 get it in in that division, and especially uh, last Friday night. Uh, you know, we had the main event was you know Juan Francisco Estrada, who we mentioned before is definitely on should be on some pound for pound list if you make it any credible pound for pound list. You know, facing Carlos Quadras in a rematch. You know, from the first Superfly card that happened on HBO. And I want to talk about that fight first, man, because that fight was just fucking excellent. Uh, <laughs> fuck, you know that, you know, from, literally from the first from the opening bell, you know, they they just went at it. They were swinging like damn, like it, it, it was like they never left. It was round thirteen from their first fight. Hell um, yeah, yeah, you know, it, it, shit was shit was excellent. Like I mean, like there was little clinching, no clinching, um, for whatever reason. You know, Quadras was very successful in the beginning and even scored a knockdown out of nowhere in the third round. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, you know, this is this is interesting because we were talking about in the previous that Quadras, you know, has seen better days. You know, he's a little long in the two. But he sure as hell wasn't fucking fighting like it. That's for damn Yeah, story. I was going to say, this nigga turned back the hands of time. Like, right? yeah. fuck. Yeah. Back was back. Yeah, like dude, I mean, dude was giving it to Estrada. Like, you know, it looked like you know that you know Quadras may actually may actually like pull the upset. But like I said, Estrada isn't a pound for pound fighter for nothing. Like, dude came firing back. You know, I mean, yeah. he, you know, I mean dude was letting do composure under fire. Like, yep. the way he could always calmly just rattle off ones and twos and threes and fours. Mm-hmm. You know, in the midst of like some dangerous shit, because. You know, Quadros was like throwing and landing some bombs, and hell yeah, for him to respond the way he do is like you know Hall of Fame level. Yeah, and it wasn't just throwing. Like Quadros wasn't throwing. He was throwing himself into into um, Estrada's bombs. Like like literally, his corner was like get in there and just start swinging. Like that was the trainer's advice to him. It wasn't like you know be defensively responsible or don't get hit with all these spades. The trainer's like just get in there and throw. <laughs> and that's what he was doing. Like, dude absorbed, like, for at least, like, four until the actual knockout, like, at least four or five rounds of real punishment. You know, I'm over here. I'm testing LB. I'm like, yo, dude, like, Quadras is, like, he's he's getting faded up, like, badly. But he was swinging. Like, he'd be in trouble. And then he'd start swinging back. Like, no clinching, none of that shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm thinking to myself, God damn, like, how much can he actually take? Because, you know... You watch Quadras, like he's taking a lot of punishment in his career. And then Estrada yeah. did not let off the gas at all. Estrada put his foot on the fucking pedal 
and start punishing dude. You know, and then, you know, he finally, I think it was in round 10, he dropped him. He dropped him for the first time. Like, Quadris went down, like, face first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like that shit, started, that shit looked like, you know, that shit looked like a knockout, Kings type of knockout. Like, dude just, like, pfft, went, hmm. went, went immediately down. And he got up, too. Like, he was swaying and everything like that. And then what did he do? He went in to trade. <laughs> he went yeah, and to the walls to the end, yo. Yeah, like he, he said, didn't even... fuck it. He said, yeah. fuck it. I'm going in. Yeah, he didn't even bother to, like, you know, to move around the ring. Like, he, he'd be well justified to clinch. I mean, I wouldn't have said shit. I was like, clinch, you idiot. Like, walk, you know, run around the ring a little bit. Clear your fucking head. You know, don't, don't go into these fades. You know, and then he got knocked down again. And you could tell that the end was near because the ref was like, you know, um, well, you know, he, he looked like he was he was good and ready to stop this fight, and then Estrada, like I said, you know, do cool and calm as an assassin, even though he was bleeding from his eye, I think too, you know, uh, you know, he came in, he landed like a couple like four or five punch combination, and the referee is like, nah, nah, we got we got we got to stop this, you know, and, and that's the that's the first time Quadras has been stopped, you know, what I mean. He, he obviously he's been to a trial before, talking with Tito, said wrong side. Like he he's fought he's fought some punches in that, and that was the first time he had been stopped. Um, like literally, like I mean, the whole Twitter was just like applauding that fight. Like you know, it, 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 like literally, like I mean, if there was a fight that would challenge um, Barachek and Zapita, it was that fight. Although it did surpass it. I mean, some people thought it did, but nah, I think, it, it, hell no, nah, it didn't surpass it. Like, nah, it was good. nah. Not yeah. that good. Well, I mean, I guess the argument is that that um, Quadras and, and Estrada was more technical in their brawling. Whatever. Ah, oh, fuck um, that stupid ass argument, right there. Yeah, like it's it's either a good fight or it's not. Like, which one is it? Yeah, no, I, I guess people. Yeah, I was like, what the hell was technical? Uh, Quadras was throwing himself into bombs. Yeah. Like, I mean, even Berchek and Zapita had some defense in between what they were yeah. doing. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, what are you talking about? These niggas was more rock em, sock em robots than fucking Berchek and Zapita. Exactly. I mean, they just happened to go down more. That just happened. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it, it was kind of stupid seeing that argument. I was like, yeah, uh, no. But if there's a runner up, then this fight sure as hell is, you know. Um, yeah, no, Estrada, you know, yeah, Estrada was just like, I mean, it, it was a spectacular fight and it capped off, you know, like I said, it was a, it was a pretty good night um, on that, on that DAZN card, um, you know, and DAZN needed a card and a fight like that too. Um, yeah, it was, it was a good fight. Yeah, no, Estrada, Estrada you know. definitely pound for pound, top 10. Yeah. And then, and then, of course, he kept his and he kept his end of the bargain, you know, for his next possible fight, you know, against one Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, who fought in the co-main. Now, he fought um, Israel Gonzalez. You know, I was like, they're both Gonzalez. I should just call one of them Chocolatito and the other one Gonzalez. <laughs> um, but in that fight, it looked like for at least a couple of rounds, it looked like Chocolatito. I thought, you know, Gonzalez. Would actually give Chocolatito some little little issue, you know, because it's like okay, you know, this dude has some fast hands or whatever. Because you know, I'm I'm a fan of people, of fighters who have fast hands, you know. Um, so I, you know, I always say I always like to say speed kills. So I was like, okay, Chocolatito's, you know, he's getting some hands put on him. But unfortunately, dudes, there wasn't enough behind that speed, like not enough to dissuade Chocolatito from actually moving in. And once he once he got going. You know, I didn't think Chuck Latino even had that engine anymore. Um, well, the dude just, dude went from, you know, eventually went from zero to 60 and he overwhelmed Gonzalez. Like he was the older yeah, man for like 10 years. Is. I was, I was gonna say, Chocolatito's hands is fucking fast. Like he still has fast ass hands. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, the problem, but with the I don't hands, think he has that second gear anymore where like he could, go up a notch and really like you see the extra snap on his shots and him just moving quicker you know I don't think he has that gear anymore but he's still operating at a high level like yeah that, that first gear is a bitch to deal with and Gonzalez got and the thing, Gonzalez got like winded after like three rounds of that shit and you know and after that he was like he didn't he didn't know what to do he didn't know what to do with him like he was just fighting spurs yeah, fighting spurts and like he was he wasn't winning no rounds. Like Takatito was just 
blending combinations. The only thing, like you were looking before, like Tucker Jr. couldn't put it into that second gear to actually put him away. So I don't think Gonzalez, at any point, was any close to getting put away, was he? Nah. No. Nah. I mean, he took, he took some punishment, but he, 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 he didn't, not to the point where you'd have the ref be like, okay, you know, I mean, I think he's taking too much punishment. I mean, he, I mean, he's a tough young cat, tough young cat though. But you know, yeah, Chaco Tito, just like I said, was Chaco Tito that night. You know, at least a version that we all know. Um, you know, pretty much Chaco Tito just like pretty much beat that ass from you know from I think round three or four on. You know, and stayed in his stayed in his first gear. Uh, Nigga didn't need a second gear. First yeah, gear was all that was needed. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so pretty much it's just like I mean, unless you can, unless you have the power to crack them like Sir Rungvisite did, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not going to stop them that easily, or at all, you know. So I mean, I, I was I was I was impressed because I was like, man, even for, like for I mean, for someone who's considered old in this division, like he 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 he, he got it, you know. I was impressed. Yeah, pretty pretty steady engine through like what a thousand punches. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say. Like some some niggas still don't think like I was I was um I was on Twitter the whole time and like a lot of niggas don't even think like they're like man Chocolatito didn't even fall off you know what I'm saying like I I seen some people say ah oh, I don't even think he I don't even think he really declined like people think he is just sore sore rung beside was just his Junior Jones. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a side on a side note, I just want to say how I love how. Junior Jones has been a, a boxing term for, and when 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 some other fighter just has your number, they call you. Oh, he's there, Junior Jones. I don't know why. I actually, I absolutely love. That. I always think that's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's it's unfortunate too. Cause I mean, Junior Jones was a good fighter. The problem is he had a horrible chin. But for some reason, though, you would think that Marco Antonio Barrera would have been able to tap it twice. Yeah, Barrera had. I mean, he had. Uh, Barrera had more trouble. Oh, than this him. chin hit back though. Fuck all that. <laughs> but poison, mm-mm. yeah, yeah. Poison had a had a mean right hand, you know. Like I mean, that's what made Poison like. If he hit you with that right hand, you was in trouble. But if you tapped him in his jaw, you you know he was out of there. Um, you know, but yeah, but yeah. I mean, no one would. No one. Saw, I mean, I remember saying no one saw Junior Jones like absolutely beating Barrera's ass twice. <laughs> like yeah, and just like no, nobody saw, nobody saw Sora beating, um, beating Chocolatito twice. Yeah. Even though we, most people don't consider the first one a beating, but that's another story altogether. <laughs> <That would> be... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't either. So, yeah, I mean that was a robbery to me. Well, I mean, I thought the fight was a, was a war of a trip. I mean, I, I did have Chocolatito winning that fight. I'm not, I'm not gonna say it was a robbery, but they, I, I was not happy with it. It was a robbery. Oh, <laughs> if one clear, if one clear guy was supposed to win, it's a robbery. Like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, like I said, I mean, it was a war of attrition because Chocolatito clearly took a lot of punishment, and that's what led to him losing. He the dished out a lot of punishment. Yeah, too. I was gonna say he dished out more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but Chuck Taylor probably this is 150. He probably wasn't used to getting hit by something like that. I mean, I'm pretty sure. I mean, the fight before that with Kuzros was tough too. Yeah, no, definitely for sure. You know, but um, I mean, but like we will see though, like after this fight, I mean, because now I mean the stage is set for you know Chocolatito Estrada two, you know, which is a long time in the making. This is, was it eight years, give or take, since their first fight. You know, when both well, one was in definitely in his prime, the other one was probably nearing it um you know so i mean i know eddie hearn has been like you know he was like oh yeah you know I, yeah we're definitely gonna make this fight next we're definitely gonna make this fight next so you know we'll probably look for it in in 2021 and uh yeah it should no. be a hell of a fight should be a i mean very good fight. Tito, he's probably like what comeback fighter of the year I yeah. mean I, I i guess i mean i don't think i don't know any other fighter that's that came back like he did some, um, some people are ready to put him back on the pound for pound list. Well, let's put it this way. Whoever wins between Chuck and Estrada will probably go on that list and probably should. Yeah. I mean, should have I Estrada, Estrada already deserves to be on there. Yeah. I mean, Estrada, Estrada, I mean, Estrada unifies Chuck Atito's belt. And, yeah, and he's already, he's already the ruler of 115 anyways. So it's like... Yeah, if he loses to Chuck then 
I feel like uh, Chocolate Tito name got to be in there in this place. Yeah, and Estrada will probably have to go down to like between 10 and 15, give or take. Yeah. You know? depending, depending on how, how the other fighters be moving, the ones we can say are probably moving though, but yeah, that that's easily a super fight right there. You know what I mean? And then let's hopefully at this time, at that point, you know, the zone is actually stabilized so they can air this shit and there's no bullshit. Uh, yeah. You know, you know, no funny business. Like you want the fights, that's a fight right there. No other, no other network is going to touch this fight. You know, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need you to, to to air these Mexicans out so I can watch it and just clap my hands like a fan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, put, put 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 Julio Cesar Martinez on my TV more. Exactly. Yeah, and you, him too. Hell yeah, man. he never yeah. disappoints. No, no, no. Originally, you know, Martinez, like, originally, you know, his original opponent came down with COVID, Max Flores. And then, so, he had another opponent that, you know, to take his place. One who actually blew weight by, like, five pounds. Now, now in America, you know, that shit would have been canceled off rip. But, you know, in Mexico, they were like, you know what, you know, we'll give you, we'll give Martinez, Martinez will get a cast, some money or whatever. And then they thought so little of him that he's like, you know what, Martinez will probably body him. And he yeah, does. I was gonna say he's gonna catch the fade anyway. So all that, all that loose, that skipping weight still got the fade. Exactly, you know, and, and yeah, pretty much Martinez beat his ass like it was no problem. Like he made him pay for being so fucking heavy too. You know, and we only took him, it only took him less than six minutes. <laughs> God damn, like my yeah. man, like his his punches just scream violence. Like damn, I can mm. you just feel the thought on every punch he he threw. Yeah, yeah. And it's so intense. It's so back to back. It's like, like the, it's like these damn offensive outbursts. Yeah, and it's like I mean everything. Everything he throws is just hard. Like you know, it's just hard combinations, hard punches. Like and, and honestly, you, you need fighters like that too. Like I mean, and, and it's not he's not defensively responsible. He is, but he, everything everything he just throws is just violence behind it. You know. And you know, and do and like I said, when and when dude goes up to one fifteen, and, and he joins like the rest of them, like I mean, this 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 is gonna be it's gonna it's gonna be a new era for one fifteen when he eventually decides to move up. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, but for now, of course, I mean, I don't know he's sure. gonna fight. yeah. I mean, honestly, right now he holds the flyweight title, and I think he's gonna defend. It. I think he's gonna try to. I think he said he was gonna try to unify it. You know, at least before he moves up. So I mean, yeah, definitely. You know, he, I mean, Julio Cesar Martinez is must see TV for sure. No um, doubt. You yeah. know, but yeah, but yeah that, that 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 his own card though. It was it was excellent though. It was it was a good Friday card. It was a great Friday card actually. You know. Yeah. No complaints. No complaints. No real slow spots. Oh, except you know, you know, having fucking um, Mauricio uh, Suleiman oh, oh, inter- do interviews. I'm sorry, but. Dude, yeah. Can we keep him? Can we keep him away from the mic, like, please? Yeah. Like, dude, I mean, dude's like, it had, I mean, he pretty much like that's it. That shit was not playing. First, he had Mikey on there, and Mikey, you know, Mikey looked like he was eating very well. You know, Mikey's like, no, I haven't been in the gym at all. Mikey. Yeah, we can tell. Yeah, we can tell. <laughs> you know, talk about whatever, the, whatever food he's been eating and shit like that. And I'm just like, yeah. damn, like, Nick, nigga, nigga, you were skinny fat before. And now you like past the skinny fat part. Right? Yeah, I mean, dude. <laughs> Yeah, dude looks like he's a middleweight at least. You know, I mean, he, he looks he, yeah, he look, he look like he, he was looking big, though. That, that's true. Yeah, you know, I was just like, and he wasn't talking about nothing. I was like, oh, I'm go- I was supposed to fight Pacquiao. But now, you know, I haven't been in the gym. I've been eating. You know, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, we can, we can tell Mexican Keith Thurman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Mikey, uh, but I mean, his, that's the thing. It's like Pacquiao might be in better shape than half these niggas out right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's fact. And, and and honestly, if they ever announce that fight, I, I'm I would put money on Pacquiao beating dude's ass. Like, I, I there's no way. You know, Mikey. I mean, it's funny too because Mikey has Mikey at one point was pound for pound, and he should be pound for pound too. But you know, dude, when he came back from the, you know from his uh, top rank issues. To PBC, he kind of, uh, you know, he kind of moved to a different beat, per se. You know, he it, it's it, he moved to the money beat, pretty much. 
You know, nigga was so, always on the money beat, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but he had the competition. That, I mean, he was beating this competition's ass. So, like after that, it was like one thirty-five. Okay, cool. Then he was up to one forty. You know, and then after that, he sold. He sells a zero to Errol Spence in a fight he should have never took. Yeah, but it's because it's because Mikey Garcia went a different route. We got the emergence of Tiafimo Lopez. That's also true. Yeah, because he because he did let it, go. It, it, you know, he filled that void, man. Exactly. Yeah, and Mikey, you know, Mikey, if you know, Mikey could have still been in the middle of all that too, you know. But hey, you know, he wants he he he, he wants that he wants that fourth weight division title. He was, so. he was trying to get bigger fights. Remember, he had the Broner fight too. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he had the Broner fight, and you know, he beat Broner's ass at least enough. You know, to, to make it to look good. And then, yeah, he had Spence fight, which I just, I shook my head. You know, and then he had Vargas earlier this year. Yeah. And he beat Vargas' ass. And he had Robert Easter, who's a big dude. So it's like, Mikey Garcia already showed that he's one of those 135ers that was going to move up and he can handle big dudes. Yeah. Because he was big himself at 135. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like, he, he, was a, he was a big shark looking for other sharks. Yeah. Yeah, and he left 140 at the worst time. Like, the fuck? Now that 140's hot, he's not there. Yeah, I 135. Mean, 147 stay hot. It's the bigger money fights, but I feel like if, if someone makes a name, a big enough name for themselves at 140, they could always challenge him at 147. I was gonna say the, the quality of a of a Mikey Garcia versus Josh Taylor or Regis Pregurius, or you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it, it, pro, Pregurius, pro great, bro. <laughs> I, 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 I said that on purpose, man. You never see the, the yeah, the, I, I know, I know, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> oh man. You know, but yeah, you know, it, yeah, it's just, I mean, Mikey's just, I mean, I mean, I know he's, let's say he's trying to wrap up his career and everything like that, you know, but, and I know, like, so the Pacquiao fight, like, literally, he's lucky because Pacquiao is literally, that's like the only fight Pacquiao actually wants. So it's like, he's actually lucky that he's on Pacquiao's radar. So, I mean, yeah, I, I heard he won that McGregor fight. <laughs> I ain't hearing nothing about Pacquiao with Mikey no more. Yeah. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the the cloud show circus fights. Oh god. Yeah, yeah. I mean, all I know is like if that happens, I'm like Pacquiao. Like you need to get rid of your belt then or something. Yeah, like strip that. him of the belt. Strip him of the belt if that's the case. Fuck. But it's the WBA, so you know they're not going to. If anything, anything they'll encourage him, and they'll probably make another belt for him for, for that fight. <laughs> Just like you know, these organizations, man, they be on some bullshit sometimes, man. Bullshit. You know, but yeah, no, yeah, Mauricio Solomon, yeah, don't we? I don't want to ever hear this guy interview anyone. I yeah, mean, it, 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 he's he sounded like a grade A franchise clown. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. it's like you just 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 do tweets from now on, so I don't have to hear your voice. <laughs> just do... <laughs> no, I, I don't even want him to tweet. Like anytime, but anytime he's on a video, he's like. He, like he's just juxtaplains everything. Like he fucking like talks in circles. And, like I'll never forget that when I saw the video of oh is, is Loma the champion or is Haney the champion? And he went like in circles. I'm like what the fuck? I, I, you're basically saying nothing. Like oh it's, oh Loma's the champion. Oh but no Haney's the champion. I'm like nigga. Now I can understand why everybody fucking hates the WBC. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm saying though. Oh man, but like I said, it, it was a good card, man. You know, I was pleased. It was entertaining. It was all that. So thumbs up the zone. You know, keeping yeah, you know, keeping the momentum. You know, for you know, for next Fridays. You know, where, where Golden Boy makes you know makes their you know their debut after COVID or not. This is not their debut. It's the, the second fight after COVID. Second card after COVID. Yeah. You know, but on on Saturday, you know, we had an offering from PBC on Showtime, a triple header. And low key on, like, on paper, I was saying, I was saying like, oh, this like this could be some, this could be kind of dope, you know, because uh, I, 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 I thought like, someone put their matchmaking hat on for the, some of these fights, you know, for, for all three fights. Um, it was the fight that was, you know, they made a bet with uh, Sergey Lipinets uh, versus his um, late minute replacement Castillo Clayton. Um, but before I get into that fight. You know, I want to get into the prospect fights because they were Mayweather promotion fighters. You know, and usually, unfortunately, like 
Yeah, Mayweather Porky Fighters, they don't have the best reputations in the world, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> oh, Jay Lee, I love <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, you know. And uh, the, the first one, was, the first fight, the opening bout was Malik Hawkins, who was one of uh, Floyd's fighters, facing Subrio Matias. Now, if you ever heard, heard us talk about this before, now, for whatever reason, Matias was a huge underdog, like talk about plus 300 400 underdog and i'm like why how you know? like how yeah, that was crazy yeah so I'll, I'll, I'll homework. yeah i'm like matias is 15 and one with 15 knockouts with a ring fatality on his yeah right. he caught a body like the fuck <laughs> yeah and and i happen to remember it because i had to refresh my memory about malik hawkins last fight and i remember i saw it because it was on a showbacks card and he was getting bossed up by only one because dude blew his knee out or something like that. You know, and I'm thinking to myself. Are you talking about that uh, Darwin Price fight? Yeah. 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 And, and it's like Darwin Price been like a dude that should have been made noise a long time ago as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, that that whole situation was crazy. Yeah, so, and I'm thinking to myself, like, I mean, they must really think how they, I mean, this must be, like, carrying, like, a floor reputation and the fact that dude was, had a zero, you know, 18-0-1, and also the fact that Matias, unfortunately, was upset in his last fight because, you know, his mind wasn't right and he didn't train right and he got upset by, like, a French contender, you know. So. Catch, catching a body will do that to you. Yeah, of course, you yeah. know. But even then, like, after that, I was just like, I mean, dude would have to go on a streak before I would put him for that to be in that type of underdog three, plus 300 400 underdog and, and anyone who put bets on that fight you made out like a fat rat <laughs> shit shit if i would have known that i would have put some money on it too yeah. yeah no and then pretty much matias like matias in that fight showed dude no respect at all none like you know hawkins he was trying i mean he was trying to move and he's trying to jab but you know, there's there's a difference between movement and then wasted movement. I mean, he wasn't giving him anything to make him respect him. So exactly. yeah. he just kind of just bullied him and just beat his ass. And it's like the thing is with with, with Hawkins, it's more of a a technical foundation aspect. Like mm -hmm. a lot of times he squares up, and you know he's you know he has his whole body to hit. Like he's a whole target. So. Yeah, because he has a long torso and everything too. Like, I mean, yeah. And then when you're, not, and then when you're squaring up, it's like, come on, like, mm -hmm. this is box. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's saying. gonna get hit. So, there's nothing. You know, when you look at that, then yeah, he was gonna always lose this fight type shit. Like, yeah, like I, I didn't see it. Like, I mean, he had the skills for it. Yeah, like because we, when he didn't give Matias anything to like, you know, to think about, Matias was like he smiled and was walking to him hands down. Like, you yeah, know? that's the thing is like he was he, he was cracking Matias with some shit though. But yeah. it's the thing is like when when it, whenever it will become a, a, a firefight, it's like he can hold it up on his end of the bargain because he'd be the one that's getting hit more and start getting hurt. Like. Mm -hmm. So it's like he, 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 nah, he just couldn't do anything. Like the, the I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't gonna, he, he wasn't gonna win those exchanges with Matias. So yeah, I mean, that that was a losing battle in and of itself. When then before you factor in all the other problems. Yeah, and once Mati and once Matias started cracking them, like you, you, you get the Hawkins got even more jittery. Like dude was just like, it was like yeah, oh, yeah, he, he, you know, he didn't want to be in there, but he still tried. Yeah, you know, and Matias was, you know, and it was, it was slowly landing them phase like he was slowly breaking them down like you know his jab snapping his head all the way the fuck back like boom like you know matias has killer power bro like you're not supposed to you know and he, he couldn't do nothing about it too and he tried to be dirty as fuck too. like he was holding constantly the rapper had to tell him, you know malik stop holding you know it was like you know yeah, yeah dude's getting obvious with the fucking holding yeah and then matias yeah, was, was, was retaliating yeah, and Matias was hitting him like in the thigh area and everything like that. You know, you know, taking a shot to the thigh. I mean, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna move us. You're not gonna move too fast. Like <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, and, and Hawkins just got slowly beaten down. Like it, it, it got, it got, it got really bad. Cause it was getting to the point, you know. But like, so I think it was like the seventh round or whatever he dropped. And I'm thinking, oh, that was just like he probably needed a breather. 
But you know, I was just like, yeah, he's probably taking too much punishment. So, so I'm thinking to myself, like, if they don't if they don't pull this dude out right now, his career is getting shortened. Um, yep. So the, and I think they and then they did because the doctor look, took a look at that dude's eye because I think like, his eye was all kind of uh. yeah. And and the referee you know rightfully stopped it you know before any real damage could get done. So I mean, yeah, the so Hawkins, yeah, I mean, he, he, pretty much like he, I mean, yeah, he, I mean, he drowned like you know, you know, he he was he wasn't he wasn't ready for Matias. He was not ready for him at all. And I mean. Matchmaking on paper it might have been good, but I think it just like I said, it was just it was just too much from right now. He probably needed some. Hulk, I mean, you can't go from Darwin Price to Matias, you know, who's a, who's a straight killer. You know, what I mean, you can't no. do that. Yeah, uh, bad matchmaking. Yeah, you know, I mean, now if Hawkins had actually leveled Price like legit and everything like that, I'd be like, hey, okay, you know, see, you know, see, see what see what happens, but. You know, you know Hawkins. Like I said, I mean, it's, it, looking for him, he, you know, he's fine and everything like that. Yeah. It's just bad. It's just bad style matchup too, because you know Hawkins. He's a guy who he, you know, he wants to box but kind of walk you down, mm-hmm. and he can't walk a guy like uh, Malti is down. No, you can't. Yeah, he, he, he didn't have anything. He was open for return fire all day and. <laughs> It's, it's like trying to have a damn station wagon walk down a tank or some shit. Like, <laughs> like that shit ain't happening. No, it wasn't. No, it definitely was not. You know, Matias, you know, I mean, Matias still remains like, you know, a, like a standout. Like, I mean, you know, 16 1, 16 knockouts. Like, it, I, I mean, hopefully you know, within a couple of fights, you know, they get dude like, like an actual. T- I mean, well, 140 has to sort itself out now with undisputed stuff. Yeah, there, there, there's a lot of moving parts now, so. Yeah. But we'll, we'll see. We'll, and most likely they'll probably, eventually they'll probably get to one of the, one of the regular 140 belts that PBC be holding. Oh, GameStop. <laughs> GameStop belts, okay. The, the GameStop belts or whatever. <laughs> You know, but yeah, no, yeah. If dudes continue to like beat down people like this, like you got, you got, you got, give him a shot at least at some title within the, like his next three fights at least. You know, so, or at least a significant fight with like a top contender or mentor or some shit like that. You know, yeah. Like I said, like I said, that dude is a problem. That that dude is probably. I, I, and I know I've said I, I call a lot of people like Margarito like, but that dude is probably the best imitation of Margarito. You know, I've seen a pie margarita. Nice. Puerto, the Puerto Rican. The you know, like Puerto a, Rican margarita. <laughs> a more athletic Carl Franz. Hmm. It's definitely not as awkward. That's, that's yeah, what I was going to say. Nah, that's say, what I'm saying. It's like he's more athletic. Like, like, yeah. like he makes, like, he does this shit like Carl Franz does, but make it look cooler, like, smoother. Yeah. Like, he'll walk you down with his hands down aggressively, like, mm-hmm. wing shots at you, like, it doesn't look as crude and you know off as frot or caveman like <laughs> or caveman yeah or caveman like yeah yeah you know, yeah Matia I can I can see it. that's actually that's actually a pretty good one you know I can I can definitely see that too word yeah but yeah Matias man like he he was he was impressive so yeah I hope PBC like you know how to move that man you know don't like. You know, personally, I want to see him running back with the dude that took his zero, but, you know, actually, that should be his next fight, really, since, you know, since 140 is all, you know, a little taken up right now. Let him, let, let him get that get back and then let him move up, you know. Uh, so, let's see. The co-main event was Xavier Martinez uh, facing, you know, um, Claudio Moreira, who was moving up to 130. And after you know a good uh, long stint at 126, um, I mean, like I said before, like there was a lot of hype between you know with Xavier Martinez, like you know they say, oh, he's like the best prospect that Floyd has, and he is a prospect, like you know, dude. I mean, you know, dude, dude is a very, very, very good prospect. But I think it's probably one of those things where this fight was pretty much one of those things where I think it's either. This could this could have been a this this was close to an uh oh in terms of in terms of the matchmaking. Yeah, no, nah, the, the 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 what I came away from with this um this fight wasted opportunities. Yeah, very much so. You know, and I think people and I remember I was I was on Twitter too. Like people were like, "Oh, Martinez is doing this and that." I'm like, 
I don't know. Not really, yeah, yeah not really. really. Yeah, it's like Marrera is pretty much, he's doing his, like Marrera is actually doing his thing. Like he's actually, this is pretty on even terms. And he's, and then that's like, and then Marrera started, I saw him, he was starting to hurt him a little bit. I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> and then, and then came that, uh, I think it was like the eighth round too, you know, where Marrera dropped him the first time with that right hook, you know, and dude, dude, dude didn't expect that. Like, you know, he was all, he was done. And this is where P was mentioning the wasted opportunities. Like, he knocked him down again. Like, he managed to daze him and knock him down again. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, okay, here's another upset. And it's like, and then every, you see people on Twitter, it's like, whoop, another Floyd fighter bites the dust. <laughs> I mean, it could have been, but then all of a sudden, Marrero just wanted to be on some <laughs> la 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 afterwards. I'm like, yeah. Uh, oh, okay, can you know you have a hurt fighter? Can you you can finish him now if you want to, or just put your foot on the gas to get more rounds. You know, the fight's not in the yeah, bag he's yet. To sweep that fight afterwards, or, or, or knock him out, like, and, like, yeah, I, I was definitely disappointed in that, like. He was supposed to take those rounds or, or produce a late stoppage, more knockdowns. Like, definitely a blown opportunity. I mean, part of me thinks that like, I think he gassed because he was because he because he let loose and he, you know, and Martinez was able to ride the storm. But I think he kind of gassed. But even then, like, I mean, you take you take a round off or whatever. You still you should he he never really made a sustained effort to win. You know, to really go to actually try to knock him out. And he let Martinez back in the fight to bank to bank a little bit more rounds. Yeah. I mean, personally, I had the fight. Um, I had a 113-113 draw. Uh, and I'd say it's mostly because I think Xavier Martinez, like he was able to come back. And that is why I, I, I take I take my head off to that young man, because you know, like I said, I mean, he kept his cool. You know, and dude had trait had some trademarks on oh, oh, both his eyes and Marrera's eye. One of his eyes was shut. You know, like you know, for a young guy, he kept himself under pre- calm and cool and collected. You know, but yeah, no Marrero. Uh, I thought I thought Martinez took it uh, on account of Marrero just giving away those those yeah. those last round. <laughs> yeah, and you kind of felt Martinez deserved it more after that. Yeah, like like them. I had a draw, but I, I I didn't I didn't disagree with it with anyone giving it to Martinez. Um, it was just one of those things. I was just not, uh, you know, I was just it, it, it was like you know, Morel could have won that fight and he could have done wonders, you know. And like and like I said, because he was he was boxing great. Like you know, he moved up to one thirty. It looked like he didn't like have any stamina issues or anything like that. Like he took dude shots. He wasn't like because then that dude got knocked out by Kid Galahad. Who's not even? I mean, who's not really the best puncher in the world like that? So you're just like, okay, you know, Morera looks like he might. He's actually he do something at 130. Um, and he, and but at least I would say this that I mean, he probably extended his career a, l- a little bit more, Morera, um, with that performance. Um, Martinez, like I said, I mean, I definitely see. I mean, he, he, pretty much, you know, the upside. You know, he, he definitely has an upside. You could tell. That he'll, he'll probably learn from this fight. Hopefully, he'll learn from this fight. <laughs> you know, so I mean, Martinez. Uh, but I do, I do have to think that Floyd has to be, you know, Floyd and company have to be very careful how they match make them. Because, uh, uh, yeah, you know, Come Marrero. Think a swim, bro. That's true. You know what I'm saying? But I, I say after a fight with that Morel, like you, you probably need to give him. I mean, he's still young. Like give him a little, give him one soft touch, and then you throw him back in the deep end. You know, you know, because like he, because he, he did get, he did, he did get marked up though. I mean, his eyes like he looked like a fucking raccoon at the end of the fight. <laughs> you know, was, uh, I mean, but I, I was impressed though. I was, imp- I was, imp- I was impressed with him because at least he showed me, in, he showed me that intangible. You know, like come back, you know, come back from, you know, from disaster or near disaster. Uh, and then Marrera, like I said, you know, if he's gonna do at one thirty. You know, I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a. He's not a gatekeeper, but he's a live dogger because he still has enough power that he could probably knock out any 130-pounder at any given time. Yep. Except, except Kid Galahad. <laughs> well, <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, man. And then uh, the main event, you know, Sergey... More, looked- waste, more wasted opportunities in the main event, but in a different way. Yeah, in a different way. Sergey Levinas versus Castillo Clayton. Now, Castillo Clayton, like, I've seen him fight before, but that's why it's like when he was announced as the replacement opponent, I was like, okay, this is even a better fight than the original opponent. 
because like dude can fight like dude can box and everything like that like dude can punch so I was like Lipinets you know and, and I'm not a believer of Lipinets at welterweight I mean he, he's, he's been doing his thing there he's undefeated at welterweight but like I said the, the Eric Bonet fight rubbed me the wrong way I said it before in the previous I was like I was, I was not impressed at what I saw in that fight and then of course he has a fight of the year with Luan Pierce and he puts him in retirement so it's just like you know, like you know, at, at best you could say that he's a he's a he's a solid second level B level welterweight for the time being. Um, and you know, so how this? Yeah, I, yeah I, I I don't know. I just don't like that fucking that style of his. Sometimes I could, I could tell he was a kickboxer. It like shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the thing is though, I think he, they, um, I think he's with Joe Goosa now. I think. You know. Yes. Yeah, because because I know I know they were trying to change his style from how it was before, and it, I think it's, it's, it, it reminded me of the herd fight with Santana earlier this year. As in, like you know, he's trying to do something different, but he doesn't know how, like you know, how he's gonna, how he's going to fight. <laughs> well, the, the, the muscle memory is still set in, right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, and then the fun things too is like literally like. He, I mean, he, I was, he tried to box me. I mean, he was the busier fighter for sure, you know. But still, Clayton though was the more accurate puncher. Like, I mean, do like do was do was lighting up with counters. Like every time he hit a counter, you see Lipinets's like foot, like it'd go like up in the air, like he was either off balance or he was hurt by it. You know, it was, it was weird. And I mean, he was rock when he was rocking him when he was fucking letting his hands go. Yeah, but the thing is, though, Clayton was working too much behind the jab. Like I think, like he, I mean, he, he was the, he was, he was, he's a pure counterpuncher. Like he was just waiting for counterpunching abilities. Like he would, he, like he, like he was just waiting for him to do something, and like either try to time an uppercut or something, like that, or get him into the rope, or bouncing off the ropes per se. Like, you know, like, like dude, dude knew knew how to use the ring, but it was just like you just want him to be more offensive. If he was, if he was more offensive, he he would have won the fight. Like clearly, won the fight. And even then, I thought he won the fight, but not by much. I, I think it was like a 115-113 fight uh, I gave to Clayton. And I had it because there were times that he just wasn't busy enough. And I had like Lipinets, and I gave it to Lipinets. And I don't he think... He was moving around too much. Yeah, I don't, I don't even think Lipinets like, even seriously bothered like dude. Skittish. Yeah, and yeah, I don't think Lipinets bothered dude at all. Like, I mean, Clayton took that dude's power well. Like, there was nothing... Like, but then it's like he would have like lipping lip into would have him against the ropes. Yeah. In the so end, it's, a, it's a ring general slip and pressing thing too sometimes. But you know, with that said, I still feel like Clayton did enough to win. You know, I felt it was like 115, 113 in his favor. It's like, yeah. I thought he clearly won. Um, Same. Yeah, you know, I think every, every, everyone pretty much had a like, close but clear. I think it was one of those fights that I think everyone agreed on. Like, it was a close fight. Yeah. Everyone agreed that Clayton, it, Clayton could have really had, you know. Just the, just the better punch selection. Yeah, uh, the reason the reason I said it was wasted opportunity in a different way is he had an opportunity to really make a bigger impression on judges and on everybody if he would just let his hands go more, stand his ground. He could have, like, took that fight. Yeah. I like, made a statement. Yeah, because the only person that was getting hurt in that fight was Lipinus. Lipinus was getting hurt a lot. Yeah, he had the size to do it, too. Like, this is the yeah. thing, man. Like, you have to believe in your strength. Like, you have to believe in your power and your boxing. Like, it's like, dude believed in it, but not on some, like, I could take I could take over the world type shit. He just, you know, he believed he could take over his city type of shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. You got to go all the way with it because, you know, the opportunity was there. Like, you land in the combinations, just sit down on them now and really rip them shits. Yeah. It was like, it's like, and he, and, he, and he could, like, I mean, he, I mean, the, t- the few times he did let loose with his hands, like, you know, he had looking at his backing up. Like, it was just like, keep going. Like you know, don't you know, don't go back to the whole jabbing and moving. Like you heard him. Yeah, he was he was yeah. hurting him when he was throwing. So it's like, why go? Why fucking get away from that? Yeah, but like I said, like I said, sometimes it's just like some people are just too set in their styles. You know, like Lipinets was you know, Lipinets was trying to 
do something with different with his styles and it wasn't really working but his his, his volume was keeping him in the fight and Clayton was like a, a, like a strict 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 counter puncher <laughs> so yeah. it felt like yeah. it. So like it ended, up, it ended up like being like a chess match, but it was an interesting chess match. So, like it wasn't like boring to me. Like you know, it was just you know. You like it had a decent pace to it. Yeah, like it wasn't the little boring. flow of styles, you know, the ebb and ebb and flow. But yeah, they they need to do a rematch, honestly. Yeah, they do. Yeah, because like I said, the official the, the, the official cards were like one judge had a one fifty one thirty for claim, and then two judges had the. 114, 114. The wasn't that wasn't that for an eliminator or something? Wasn't that an eliminator fight? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that was the yeah, because that was gonna be the limited uh, original supposed to, supposed to be for like an interim IBF belt. Uh, yeah, as I say, you can't have an eliminator fight in a draw. What the fuck, run that shit back. Well, I mean, what happens? What what? what cause I know because this is what happened with I know Tevin Farmers. You know when he had when he had a double mandatory, it's because their mandatories fought to a draw. So Tevin Farmer I fought both of them. <laughs> <laughs> the horrible fights. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I mean, I was obviously I don't see either fucking um, Spence or definitely not Danny Garcia being like, you know, I'm gonna fight both of you guys. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, none of them, neither of them would have an issue um, with Lip and Nets. That's for sure. Yeah, I know, like you know, you know, but yeah, I, and the funny thing too is like Lip and Nets and Clayton both expressed like they wanted to run back, but Lip and his manager was just saying like. Oh no no, this guy's too difficult. Um, yeah no, let's wait for Porter or let's wait for. Oh our, my you know, God! Of course let's, they would say. That. Let, let's wait for our original opponent, who's who, in my opinion, is lesser than Clinton. Like, dude was dude doesn't impress me at all. Um, so I was like, yeah, like you know, one person saying whatever, but you know, yeah, I, yeah, I do think that, yeah, they definitely need to run that back because it's like, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean that right there just tells you who won the fight. Yeah, exactly. You know, because um, I mean, I don't. Know, I think I guess Lipness probably wants to try and make some money. You know, and a loss to Clayton will probably be a setback to him, <laughs> a clearer loss. You know, so. Well, uh, well, if he can't beat Clayton, he's definitely not beating the uh, the 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 champions. The fuck. Yeah, I know. I mean, Danny Garcia uh, will probably probably decapitate him with a left hook. Fucking Spence will probably just break him down from head to body. <laughs> You know, though depending what Spence looks like, of course, after Garcia, of course, you know, you know, right yeah. now we don't know what Spence's uh, physiology is like if he can actually take punishment or anything for that matter. But yeah, no, Lipinets though, well, he, I was I wasn't impressed. I don't think you guys were impressed with him as much. Although, like I said, you nope. in the fight, you know, Clayton, Clayton can Clayton has the Clayton can be more than a B level, but he's gonna have to let his hands go. Because uh, you know, you're not you're, you're not gonna win. Like you can box up all you want, but if you're not hurting any of these guys like that, you're not going to get the win. You're not gonna get the decision. I mean, either that or you get the PBC draw. <laughs> yeah. You know, or you get a whole bunch of PBC. Extends everybody's career. Which is which is funny because I like texted LB the minute like the judge was reading the scorecards. I'm like. This is gonna be a PVC draw, and right on schedule. I'm like, yep, I knew it. Yeah, because uh, nope. yeah, because they can't have. I mean, Lipinets is a PVC fighter. They don't want a known Canadian fighter. Although we asked for on PVC before to get that type of, you know, to get that, uh, you know, to get that type of uh, win like that. So you know, but at least Clayton at least kept his zero. You know, that's the that's the best thing. Like if he had lost, I would have said it was some bullshit. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, you know it was it was a good main event. You know, at least you got to, you got you got to see uh, you, I mean, you got to see some you know some prospects. You got to see like the people contenders do do their thing or whatever. Because like I said, you know, eventually one of those fighters are gonna shake up the main event scene in some fashion. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, Lipinus, Clayton too. Yeah, they, I, I, I'm all for it. They, they need to run that back. You know. Yeah. Because uh, I, I mean, because like I said, they're gonna have to figure out that mandatory situation anyway. So, so we'll see what happens there. But um, but yeah, yeah, those were you know those were like I said, it was a good weekend of fights. And then you know next weekend, you know starting Friday, you know we got the, the Golden Boy card, and then Saturday Match Room, PBC, and Top Rank. You know all four organizations represented with at least, with at least, at least one intriguing fight. You know or noteworthy fight. You know that's gonna air, 
So, yeah, we're, boxing fans, we're going to eat. We're going to eat very good, very well, hopefully. <laughs> Word. So, yeah, no, so, yep, I mean, that's our recap and that's our show for tonight. Um, LB, man, do you have any final thoughts? Oh, man, I'm good. Um, just I look forward to a good weekend of boxing. Uh, make sure y'all stay tuned for uh, what ringgameradio.com has in store for y'all. If y'all not following us, and you sleep, you need to fix that and follow us. No so. doubt about that. You definitely gotta fix that because you know, ring game is the squad. Like I said, you know, we always like I said, we always have things you know, you know, ready to go. You know, what I'm saying, you know, things that we're working on. So as always, like, stay tuned. AOP man, do you have any final thoughts? What? I mean, you already know what it is. Ring gang radio all day. You already know where to find us. Twitter, YouTube. Instagram, Facebook, ringgangradio.com. You know the vibes. Yes, sir. You know, I got nothing to add on to that. Like I said, you know, just, you know, you got to get down or get laid down. You know what I'm saying? Ring gang, you know, was the truth. You know, so I say, yeah, full everything. State property. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I, 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 I just saw, I watched someone the other day with the fucking B Hops appearance in that shit. You know, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Random as fuck too. So I mean, you know, I mean that's a low, that's a low key. That's one of them hood classics. So you know, it was just very still watchable after all these years. You know, so um, but yeah, you know, so for for for, for myself, Pat Scorpion, the knowing representer for LB Shutterworth, the God, the Go artist for King P Bodega P. This has been another you know great episode of Real Talk. Where as always, it shit's real. We talk about it. So until next time, peace. <laughs>